Javi, ¿qué pasa? No me lo puedo creer. Espectacular incendio. Ha arrasado la fábrica de Campofrío en Burgos. Y nos tuvo que pasar. Ha comenzado pasadas las seis y media. Parecía que íbamos a salir del año ilesos, pero no. Y en unos segundos ha desaparecido, te ha desaparecido toda nuestra vida. Sucede cuando menos te lo esperas. Es de repente, zas, todo se te viene abajo. Pero solo hay que mirar un poco más allá para darse cuenta de que tu dolor no es el único. Porque este año a todos se nos ha quemado algo. Los afectados por las participaciones preferentes de la comarca toledana... A nosotros se nos ha quemado la paciencia. A nosotros se nos ha quemado el futuro, porque vamos a desaparecer. A nosotros se nos ha quemado la esperanza. Se nos está quemando el arte. A nosotras se nos quemó la confianza. Caos de corrupción. Y todos estamos quemados por lo mismo. Pero la vida es lo que tiene. Que también te demuestra que ni en esas estás solo. Buenos días, aquí la bombería, dígame. Sí, sí, uy, se han manifestado muchas familias y han parado eso, sí. Gracias. Cataluña, uy, el está que arde. Chus, este es un fuego muy delicado. Que se encargue chiquito. Te lo estoy llamando Arturo. Y es que en este país nos hemos dado cuenta de que tenemos algo a prueba de fuego. Lo del desahucio ya está arreglado, pero falta mucho apoyo, ¿eh? Sí. Es la enorme capacidad de apoyar siempre a quien tienes al lado. Venimos a ayudar, ¿se puede? ¿Ayudar? Claro que se puede. Aquí hay fuego para todos. Porque el sentido del humor y las ganas de salir adelante, eso no nos lo quema nadie. ¡Un momento! Jefe, solo faltaba usted. ¿Usted qué nota? Como mucho humo y huele a chamusquina. Sí, eso va a ser un incendio. No, no se preocupe que vamos. Bueno, de todas maneras, si usted tiene que salir, nos deja la llave debajo del pudo. Bueno, para no andar perdiendo tiempo, este, ¿qué, ¿qué autobús tengo que coger? Buenos días a todos. Good morning, everyone, and first of all, uh, thanks very much uh, to uh, Mupfre for inviting us uh, to be here at this uh, great event and to be able to uh, share with you our uh, modest uh, learnings after a tragedy that we experienced in November last year, on November 16th which uh, meant that we had to uh, manage a situation of crisis, of uncertainty, with uh, a lot of business challenges. But all of a sudden, from one day to the next, all those business challenges uh, turned uh, into a crisis. But with an attitude that's reflected in this video that I wanted to start the presentation with, uh, that shows our spirit at Campo Frio Food Group, nobody can change the way uh, we uh, cope uh, with life challenges and uh, the business. And I'll start by explaining what happened on November 16, when at uh, 6.30 a.m., my uh, colleague uh, Nacho González, CEO for Spain, uh, called me up to tell me that there was a fire in Burgos as coordinator of the crisis committee. We didn't know the scale of the tragedy then, and our first concern, obviously, was uh, to find out whether there was any uh, human damage, whether there were any employees, uh, staff uh, that had been affected. And uh, we quickly realized uh, that the thing was getting out of hand, and we uh, brought in the action protocols, which are the protocols that all companies define and all executive uh, members uh, keep very carefully in some folders in a drawer. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, it's uh, better to have them updated, memorized, uh, and with a proper understanding of what needs to be done, because the speed of the events means that you often have to make a decision first and then think. We activated the uh, Global Crisis Committee at the company, and as an anecdote, uh, I'll say that we had uh, redefined uh, our situation as a result of a crisis at our Italian company at Ferrucci. And in the minutes of the last executive committee, uh, where um, the uh, training plan was submitted, it uh, was stated that the crisis committees uh, were established uh, and that we would have a drill. So when I called up to uh, our CEO, he said, uh, since Remy is from Bilbao, she hasn't bothered with a drill. She's put us directly into the crisis. Well, uh, at the uh, 
Executive uh, Committee, we activated all the functional crisis committees we had at the company for uh, personnel, the supply chain, and the communication side. Communications is one of the issues I'll also uh, mention because um, we were somewhat overwhelmed uh, by the impact of the news in the media and uh, we started uh, to uh, manage things following the procedures and uh, looking at uh, what the decisions were, what was being done and what wasn't in order to uh, subsequently analyze all the decisions and consequences. This slide uh, is uh, more or less the index for the presentation I'm going to share with you. We have all the issues we uh, dealt with uh, starting on that Sunday, November the 16th. Everything related uh, with the fire. We had uh, a significant uh, crisis because we had some ammonia tanks. Uh, if the fire had reached them, it was uh, uh, said that the city of Burgos would have to be evacuated. The employees, the impact, uh, as uh, you saw, uh, for them was tremendous at uh, La Bureva plant. There are or will be a thousand people employed. Then we have the issue of solidarity. The response was impressive on a national and international level. Uh, communications, of course, insurance, the supply chain, and of course, uh, the sales and distribution. From one day uh, to the next, uh, 60,000 tons uh, are burned. In a specific range of uh, baked products, and we had to immediately respond to the market, otherwise uh, we would be wiped out. To put the magnitude uh, of the incident uh, into perspective with some figures, at La Bureva plant, as I said, uh, there were a thousand uh, employees. Next to La Bureva plant, we have another plant called Jamones Burgaleses, where there are another 300 people. And at the time of the fire in November, as you can imagine, just before the Christmas campaign, we had over a million and a half, a million and a half pieces of ham in stock. Regarding volume, what was burnt at La Bureva plant represents 30% of Spain's volume. It represents 37% of uh, sales, 50% of the gross profit. And uh, if we look at the pieces, over uh, 6.4 million cooked pieces, plus uh, 16 million of what we call minis, and over 121 million uh, sliced packs. As you can see, the uh, figures leave you uh, completely in a state of shock. If we uh, look at uh, the uh, various uh, angles uh, we had to manage, the first uh, was, uh, of course, the fire. The fire took a week to be put out, and uh, during the first few hours or first days, there was a great deal of danger, as I said, of uh, the fire having an impact not only on the plant facilities, but even on the city of Burgos. Fortunately, it was Sunday morning. Only uh, 25 employees uh, were working at the time, and there was no uh, personal uh, damage that we had to manage. The people there, the uh, employees, uh, the fact is that they uh, responded uh, exceptionally well. They were an example. They tried, uh, together with the Burgos firemen, they tried to save as much as possible. And as I said, we focused on uh, protecting the ammonium tanks and uh, protecting the Jamones Burgaleses uh, plant to at least be able to uh, save uh, the uh, production and business on that side. Once the fire was put out, we started uh, with the uh, demolition, which we finished just a few weeks ago. The Labureva plant, 
is around 70,000 square meters. So the demolition process, uh, once uh, that uh, the uh, scientific police were there uh, taking all the necessary information, they gave us permission to continue with the demolition. And it's taken three, uh, four months to uh, carry out all the work. Jamones uh, Burgaleses, we uh, managed uh, to save. And although we've had some traceability issues with some of the products stored there to uh, determine what the impact uh, was of uh, having uh, no uh, electricity or gas uh, supply for four days, uh, what uh, effect uh, this may have had on the products. From the point of view of the employees, and this is uh, something that uh, particularly concerns me, the uh, response uh, starting on that very Sunday was uh, not to do the easy thing, but to do what needed to be done. That is, uh, to uh, come out immediately and say that the company was going to be uh, rebuilt, that the uh, factory was going to be rebuilt in Burgos, and uh, that uh, we undertook uh, to uh, keep the jobs. Campo Fria Food Group and the Executive Committee had uh, previously uh, established a three-year strategic plan, a three-year strategic plan that uh, makes all the business sense in the world. And uh, we were committed to, to uh, keeping to it. The uh, fire at the Burela plant was an accident, an incident that would unquestionably have would have an impact, we would have to uh, manage it and would uh, delay some of the business figures. But we were absolutely convinced uh, that the company business plan was uh, what it should be. And we were going to continue to make the necessary decisions uh, so that that business plan would be successful and would end uh, the way it should. So all the production, all the uh, know-how uh, of uh, our employees uh, was obviously uh, very uh, valuable to us. In 24, 48 hours, uh, we uh, presented the application to suspend employment. As you know, the administration allows you to suspend the uh, employment uh, or uh, to uh, dismiss uh, the employees uh, uh, with compensation. But we decided not to do the easy thing, but to do uh, what is in line with um, the values of the company, that is, uh, uh, not uh, to lay anybody off. A hundred and twenty of the uh, staff, uh, because of the uh, roles uh, they had at the plant, uh, didn't need to be uh, temporarily suspended. Uh, so uh, we uh, initially uh, only uh, suspended uh, 600 and some people, and uh, they are currently working in other plants at Torrente, in Olvaga, and another two plants in Burgos. We opened uh, an employee uh, support office uh, to uh, answer any uh, possible queries. And uh, eight uh, people from the human resources team uh, provided that service. We signed a social agreement uh, with them on December 11th. Everything happened very quickly. Uh, this. Uh, was also one of the uh, main discussions we had, the uh, Campo Frio uh, Christmas campaign, and I hope you all uh, recognize this, is one of the uh, campaigns uh, that uh, people look forward to uh, at Christmas time. Uh, people wonder uh, what will Campo Frio do uh, this year. And, uh, you know, we focus more on the emotional side on the engagement uh, with uh, the uh, Spain brand and the values of the company. So uh, we were discussing what are we going to do this year. The uh, campaign uh, we had uh, was cancelled. Shall we come out? Uh, shouldn't we come out? If we do, what should the message be? Uh, uh, to what extent can you use humor? To what extent do we have to represent the tragedy we're going through? And uh, we... Uh, 
decided to uh, continue with our company uh, DNA. We're going to uh, come out and we're going to uh, come out with our slogan that uh, uh, nobody's going to change the way we are. We wanted to shoot it in Burgos, uh, but it wasn't possible to shoot it if we didn't sign the social agreement with the trade unions uh, to uh, avoid any uh, kind of problem. We signed it on a Thursday at 11 p.m. And on Friday at 8.30 a.m. we started to shoot. So, um, again, very quick decisions and with incredible uh, teamwork mobilized around the executive committee and uh, the rest of the layers in the company because uh, the uh, speed uh, of all the events was enormous. The employer, employees had an extraordinary response and we also worked with the administration, both the central administration with the uh, Ministry of Labour and uh, with the government of Castile and Leon, and we had a favourable response from both. And we even uh, changed some inconsistencies uh, that we had in the legislation in this country, where we were offered aid uh, to uh, lay off staff, considering the unemployment rate that Alfredo explained earlier, but we weren't offered aid uh, to uh, temporarily uh, suspend employment. And uh, technically, when uh, employment is suspended, the company has to pay for the cost of social security, which in our case was 11 million euros in uh, 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 broken down PNL after a fire like this and maintaining a manpower cost of 11 million euros without having the productivity of the employees is something difficult to take on board. We uh, managed uh, to get uh, the Council of Ministers in the last uh, December meeting uh, to approve what's known as the Campo Frio decree, whereby uh, companies facing a similar situation, a force majeure or uh, a natural catastrophe, that uh, commit uh, to uh, reinvesting can uh, apply for the exemption of the, those social security fees. And uh, as you can imagine, we did that immediately. There was enormous solidarity. And this uh, is a, a characteristic uh, of this country, I think. We received uh, solidarity from many companies, uh, from the city of Burgos, and, uh, of course, uh, from the rest of the companies that make up the Campo Frio Food Group. And for those of you that don't know the Campo Frio Food Group uh, so well and are more familiarized with Campo Frio Spain, Campo Frio Spain is one of the companies that makes up the group. We have another 11 uh, groups in France, in Italy, in Holland, in Belgium, in the United States, in Portugal and in Germany. All of them set up a zero line where they made contributions for the employees affected and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, Spain uh, confused or uh, United States confused uh, Spain with Real Madrid and that's why they're wearing the Real Madrid uh, scarf in the picture. Uh, what can we do? From the uh, point of view of communication which is uh, another important aspect to be managed in this kind of crisis because you may have a fantastic management of the fire, a fantastic uh, management of the insurance issues, a magnificent uh, management of uh, many things. But if the customer or the consumer doesn't uh, perceive it properly, it can uh, cause a lot of damage. Here we decided to focus all the communication uh, from the point of view of the brand values. Campo Frio is a brand that has its own identity. It's identified with a number of values. And uh, as you can see, we came out uh, immediately from that emotional point of view to uh, express our gratitude uh, for all the solidarity we have received and, of course, uh, to try to reinforce our brand image even uh, without a product. And uh, that's a, a very uh, interesting aspect that I assume will be analyzed at some business schools, how you can keep a brand alive when uh, you don't have uh, a product on the shelf. But it was important to do it, because otherwise, uh, when we uh, came back, uh, we would no longer exist. Our strategy uh, proactively with the uh, media was quite low profile. 
We didn't uh, want to use too many initiatives, although it's uh, true uh, that we were uh, overwhelmed because during the first months we were constantly in the news, on television, on the radio, with interviews of employees, uh, the uh, works committee, consumers, so uh, it was difficult to control. That's why it was uh, very important uh, for all the uh, variables uh, that need to be uh, managed in uh, a crisis management to uh, uh, use a keyword that I love, not just from the business point of view, but also um, from uh, a personal point of view, coherence or consistency. If you say that you define yourself as a company through a number of values, you have to behave according to those values. And often we see that there's uh, quite a lot of inconsistency because we have a lot of values, but then we behave uh, differently. If you have that consistency and you apply it to everything you do, you can more or less uh, control in a positive way all these uh, impacts uh, that we had uh, in the press. And a very important focus, focus has to do with these social networks and this environment in which we live where there's a flow of information, a very rapid flow of information. It was necessary to have a very significant focus and see what was going on brand-wise in all of these uh, tweets which at a breakneck speed were propagating all over the social networks. And as you can see here, there was a positive feeling that uh, grew tremendously as the days and the weeks went by and uh, as a function of how the company was managing the crisis. From the internal communication point of view, exactly the same thing. There was a big concern amongst the 11,000 workers that form part of the Campo Frio group in Spain and other countries. There was a very big concern. And there was a big concern because our factory was the most important of the 32 plants we have in operation in Europe and the United States because everybody was aware of the fact that if we were not able to manage this crisis in a suitable manner, the impact in Spain, without a doubt, was going to have a repercussion in other countries and in other companies of the group. So at Campo Frio, we've undergone a very significant transformation process because we had the merger in 2009 when Campo Frio España merged with another firm to become an international company, in other words, a company with presence in many countries. And three years ago, it became a multinational company where synergies and where the integration capability and the sharing of knowledge and expertise and processes has made us much more strong. And now we are in a leadership position in Spain as far as meat processing goes. So this is why this new context, when you have the strength of a multinational and you don't have independent companies operating in different countries, the reaction was much quicker and much more agile. But in any case, we had to manage that communication properly for all our workforce in all the countries. We set up a meeting point on the intranet where we provided all the information that was related to what was going on at the whatever factory, all the actions that had been implemented, and we spent lots of time on holding meetings with uh, workers to explain to them what was going on so that information could reach them from us before other through other sources and because we believe that each interaction is significant and we have lots of workers and they have lots of interactions and they are wonderful ambassadors for what the company looks like. And then we have insurance. Well, this is possibly the most interesting aspect for this uh, public that I'm speaking to. And it's the first time for me that I had to manage a um, claim of this kind. I think that there are not that many people have had this opportunity between inverted commas, which is what we've had to experience. But I can say is that having a solid structure as regards uh, insurance coverage is something that, well, just like crisis protocols, we believe it's something that we should have, but perhaps you never consider that it is that important until you have that experience, and it's a vital variable in order to manage a situation of this kind. And La Bureva crisis, 
activated practically all the insurance policies we had. Obviously, the damage policy, and we're here with our hosts, MAPRE. They behaved wonderfully well in our actions with them and also with IFEME that had the civil uh, liability policy and the environmental liability policy, but in any case, we activated all our policies. And we had to manage in a global fashion all the impacts that this was having. And in the first meetings we held with EFM and MAPFRE, I remember one of the sentences that somebody mentioned. And we were under lots of pressure and we didn't really know what to do. And the first thing somebody said is that we are here for situations of this kind, otherwise we wouldn't make any sense. So you have our fullest support so that your company can go back to what it was like prior to this accident. And the truth is that it's something that it's very comforting because at the end of the day, coverage and solidity and a partnership response when you're dealing with such a complex situation like this and when you are dealing with so many variables makes you feel completely uh, calm and it motivates you to continue. And without a doubt, this is a path that we're still covering with rigor and with professionalism as regards all the people involved. And I think that for the time being, we are in a satisfactory situation and I believe that it will be possible to reach a very suitable solution adequate for all.